Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Young here, and welcome to another The Evil Within news update. Today, Bethesda finally released the full 1080p trailer from Tokyo Game Show. Last time, I analyzed footage taken directly off the live stream, which was really bad quality and made it really difficult to do an accurate analysis. In this video, I'll be reaffirming and correcting what I've already analyzed. So be sure to watch my previous videos if you haven't done so yet. Anyways, before I Reanalyze the footage. Check out the full 1080p trailer first. For Adam 13, this is Sergeant Sebastian Castellanos. What's happening over there? Uh, unknown. Checking. <laughs> what do you mean unknown? Uh, please hurry. No weapons left in their cars. There's no one here to report in. The smell. <sighs> Smells like blood. All right, stay sharp. It's the police. Anybody there? This is unbelievable. Those who've watched my previous videos may have already spotted extra details. Also interesting to note is that there are some minor differences between the Japanese version of the trailer we saw from the Sony press conference and this American version. The fonts are different in the two versions, with the American version having a more typical font, while the Japanese version features a more customized font with blood spatters. Another difference is the soundtrack. Here is what the Japanese version of the trailer sounds like. <laughs> It was Ruvik. It was him. And here is what the American version sounds like. Overall, if you compare the two trailers side by side in terms of audio, you will notice differences here and there. Apart from these minor details, as far as I can tell, the trailers are pretty much identical. Anyways, let's begin reanalyzing some details. The biggest difference from the shitty footage we saw last time is that we can actually see what the graphics look like, and they are not too shabby considering that the game is still in development. We also get a clearer picture of the three main protagonists, Sebastian Castellanos, Joseph Oda, and Julie Kidman. Skipping ahead, we can finally clearly see the name of the police department on the car. It says Crimson Police Department with a K, and I'm going to assume that the department itself is fictional, similar to Raccoon Police Department from the Resident Evil franchise. As the characters move into the mental hospital, we get a glimpse of its full name. Those who've watched my previous video should know by now that the facility is called Beacon Mental Hospital. After walking over the cadavers of murdered staff members, we are given a glimpse of who I'm assuming to be the character known as Ruvik. Right after the specter is shown, the following dialogue is spoken by a dying doctor from Beacon Hospital that players encounter early in the game. It was Ruvik. It was him. 
As the dialogue is spoken, flashes of the mental hospital's various locations are shown, and now that we have much clearer footage, it's possible to make out that this place is actually a trap room with spinning blade wheels on the sides. The light that I initially thought was the sun is, in actuality, a really bright light bulb. The footage also clearly shows Sebastian in the background, probably thinking to himself, fuck my life. Last but not least, I want to take a look at this scene. This time, it is quite clear that the contraptions on the left side are chainsaws, likely part of the Butcher's Collection, who is currently downstairs. Well, that is until Sebastian triggers the damn alarm. From then on, it's all out chaos. And with that, I would like to conclude this trailer analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. Again, be sure to watch my previous analysis videos for other details. And to be further updated on the evil within, be sure to join the nation and subscribe to Young Year. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much, and Young out.